You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 6. A historic agreement in Singapore will have the latest on the major step toward denuclearization in North Korea. And the effort to end homelessness here on the Sun Coast is seeing some progress. We're going to show you the numbers and a solution that's getting more people into housing. Plus, more rowing championships are coming to Sarasota County. A look at how much the region is expected to, gener to generate in tourism revenue. Good morning, Sun Coast starts right now. Six o'clock, it is June 12th, Tuesday. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for waking up with us today. Also waking up with us today is the one and only John Scalzi. What's on tap for today, John? Well, we are looking at a few scattered showers along the coastline. Very similar situation to what we saw yesterday. Only yesterday it was Charlotte Harbor's turn. Today it's Tampa Bay's turn, and there's a few scattered showers lifting northward right along Holmes Beach. These showers are not very heavy. They're generally offshore and staying offshore, and this one is built back just a little bit, so it's even further away from the coastline. But nevertheless, about a 20% chance of a shower during the morning along the coastline, followed by mostly inland rain chances later in the day. A little bit of high cloudiness streams passed from time to time, but it won't produce rainfall. Our daytime high today tops out warm once again, coming in in the upper 80s. We'll have a a feels like temperature that'll be in the lower 90s today. So again, a very warm afternoon with not much cooling rain. We'll talk about the rain chances for the rest of the weekend. Take a look at the tropics coming up in just a few. All right, thank you, John. Checking fresh alert traffic right now. We'll find out there's not much to speak of so far in Manatee County. A little slow down there at State Road 70 as you approach the light at 301 westbound. Otherwise, all clear. Checking the upper half of Sarasota County. Some more red there to speak of. You've got 301 northbound between B Ridge and Fruitville as you head toward the 41301 juncture there. B Ridge westbound at Beneva and also Clark Road eastbound as you travel through Palmer Ranch and head toward the interstate. And then our final map to the south. Nothing to speak of besides a little bit of a slowdown there. 41 southbound as you approach the Charlotte County line. Well, for the first time in history, a sitting American president and a North Korean dictator standing side by side, then taking a step forward towards peace. ABC's Tara Palmieri has the latest on the summit from Singapore. A five hour meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong Un, ending with a promise. We had a historic meeting and decided to leave the past behind. The world will see a major change. President Trump forming a friendship with the North Korean leader and then signing an agreement. We have developed a, a very special bond. It worked out for both of us far better than anybody could have expected. In that letter, President Trump agreed to provide security guarantees to North Korea in exchange for Kim's, quote, firm and unwavering commitment to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. The president sitting down with ABC's chief anchor, George Stephanopoulos. I think he wants to denuke. It's very important. Uh, without that, there's nothing to discuss. It all started with that historic handshake and then the smiles and pats on the back. President Trump leading Kim Jong-un into that private one-on-one -on -one where he looked into his eyes and came out saying... A really fantastic meeting. A lot of progress. Their one-on-one -on -one lasting about 40 minutes. This after months of throwing barbs and threatening nuclear war. The North Korean leader in on the theatrics of the historic moment. The president throwing a risky tease to a leader he once mocked as short and fat when he asked the photographers to make them look thin. Getting a good picture of everybody so it looks nice and handsome and thin. The president showing off his ride, the beast, and then ending the day with a signing and an invite to the White House. The agreement states that because of this summit, the two countries have overcome, quote, decades of tensions and hostilities. Now the follow through on this commitment is what will define this historic moment. Tara Palmieri, ABC News, Singapore. Well, we wanted to dig a little deeper into this history in the making, so we talked to a local expert about the Singapore summit. And he says the whole thing was very unusual from the start. Our Marla Spence explains. She's live now in the studio. Marla? Hey, Ray and Stephanie, this morning, people all over the world watched the summit in hopes to learning what was exactly discussed and more on the deal that was signed by President Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un. Yesterday, we spoke to a local political expert, Mark Weston. He is a historical uh, author as well. He says this historical meeting between the two leaders was history in the making. Weston is a pre presidential author, but has also written about politics in the Far East. He predicted expectations 
expectations of the summit could be very low. He says usually when two heads of states get together for an agreement, 90% of the negotiations have already been figured out and both leaders are just finalizing small points. Wesson says that's not the case here, which makes this a historic meeting and also makes it quite unusual. That's not the case here. So uh, the idea that a whole nuclear agreement can be negotiated in a couple of days is, is naive. Wesson says since preliminary negotiations were not discussed between President Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, it could create some cause for concern between the two leaders. What he says could have happened and potentially have happened, that's coming up at 6.30. Back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, Marla. President Trump's top economic advisor suffered a heart attack overnight. Larry Ludlow is being treated at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders says that Ludlow is in good condition and doing well. Well, this story has been called the Granny on the Run story. The Fort Myers woman accused of killing her husband and a Bradenton woman did not appear in court for a scheduled arraignment yesterday. 56-year-old Lois Reese waived her appearance for arraignment on murder charges. The judge filed a new court date for July 11th. Reese is facing charges of first-degree murder in the shooting death of a Bradenton woman in Fort Myers, and she's also a suspect in the murder of her husband back in Minnesota. Well, back here on the Sun Coast, Sarasota changed its philosophy on how they helped the homeless over a year ago. And some good news to report this morning, the numbers are going down. A recent census showed that 18% decrease in homelessness from the previous year. Now, while those numbers don't tell the whole story, the Sun Coast Partnership to End Homelessness says there is noticeable change in the area. After hiring a consultant, Sarasota to focus, decided to focus first on housing, finding apartments and getting them assistance with rent. The change in every aspect of what we're doing has resulted in uh, a different feeling in the community, a different feeling among the providers of services that we're really beginning to have the serious impact that we always hope to have. DeMarco says there are still challenges like finding more funding, and there still are over 4,000 homeless who still need to find that housing. More rowing competitions are coming to Nathan Benderson Park. After an extensive bidding process, Sarasota County will host the next three youth rowing national championships. Based on years past, Visit Sarasota County says this means millions of dollars in future tourism revenue. And in 2017, it brought in $7 million of economic impact and about 4,000 room nights. The park teamed up with the Visit Sarasota County uh, Agency to put a plan in place, and the park says they have even more events like this coming up in the works. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast. Could what you eat prevent you from getting sick? Well, we're going to tell you what needs to be on the menu to keep you healthy. But first, here's a live look back at Singapore. We're right now at 6.07 p.m. That is Marina Sands Bay. The Singapore summit is now over. Certainly an historic event for the U.S. and North Korea and the world for that matter. We'll sort that out throughout the hour right here on Good Morning Sun Coast. But first, let's sort out the forecast from John Scalzi. This looks pretty good for us. We don't have much in the way of any kind of problems with your morning commute. Weather-wise, we do have a couple of showers just off the coastline. but. Really, these are not going to be a big problem. They may just briefly touch areas around Anna Marie with a little bit of light drizzle or rain, but it's not going to be a big deal. Otherwise, we have an onshore wind flow today. And if you are headed to the beach, just realize that there are some locations, especially from Lido southward, where there has been reports of irritant in the air due to the red tide bloom that we are now having. Mostly sunny and dry today. West wind coming in at about 5 to 10. Sky will be mostly sunny. UV index will be high. And if you're headed to the beaches, I'm going to give it a three beach ball out of four day because of that little bit of red tide in the air. The complete forecast for you coming up in a few. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service, it's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, 
Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Picking out a new ceiling fan? That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do it yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. Thank you. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Sparky. Get to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota for big savings on new Ram trucks. The Ram 1500 has been named a Consumer Guide Best Buy for six years in a row. Yet an all-new redesigned 2018 Ram 1500 for as little as $21,499. Or save big and get up to $13,000 off a new Ram Bighorn Crew Cab. Better prices. Bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota. My California Closets experience has been wonderful. My mother's a huge inspiration. Before she passed away, she would say, you should do something special for yourself. First time I saw my closet, I immediately thought, this is the best thing I've ever done for myself. I call it my Tiffany style closet. I mean, I can shop in my own closet every day. I love that. My name is Cynthia, and this is my California Closet story. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So for the first half of the day, I'm going to put in about a 20% chance of showers, but most of us will be sunny and dry throughout the day today. That 20% chance is not very high, obviously, and it'll be mostly near the coastline during the morning hours. But then as we head into noontime, we'll look at a transition from coastal regions to inland regions. And by three, I think most all the activity is going to be in inland areas, leaving the beaches very quiet and deep. Uh, I don't think we'll see much in the way of rainfall during the evening hours. All of that will be well, well inland and away mostly from our viewing area. Maybe during the early night time around midnight or so we might see a few of the showers that build inland kind of drift back toward the coastline. But right now you can see a few of those scattered showers particularly around the mouth of Tampa Bay and down to the south just off the coast of Rotunda. Those showers are gradually dissipating and I think as we head into 9 10 o'clock we'll see fewer and fewer of those showers around. Um, the one that's closest to the coast is still about a mile offshore of Holmes Beach and Anna Marie Island, but still a light drizzle, certainly possible close to the coastline. We have a little bit of high fair weather cloud kind of streaming by from time to time throughout the day today, but none of this producing any rainfall. We have uh, upper level winds that are kind of bringing these showers a little bit further to the north. Again, mostly dry conditions over much of the Gulf waters as some drier air is kind of filtered southward. And actually a little tongue of that drier air moved across our area yesterday and this sort of the, the remnants of it are still lingering across north central Florida, but they're in the process of moistening up pretty quickly. So no worries there. High pressure, the dominant weather feature for us again today positioned in such a way that we have a light westerly wind flow across our region. That light westerly wind will encourage the sea breeze to move inland so that as we put the maps into motion and look toward the afternoon, you'll watch those showers build in mostly inland areas. 
Now, as they decay, some of them may drift back toward the coastline just a little bit and bring us slight chances, as I mentioned, of those showers around the midnight hour kind of passing by the coast. But most of us and most of the day, sunny and dry. Most of the week will be sunny and dry, actually. There's not a big rain chance. Maybe by the time we get to the weekend, we might see a little shift in the wind pattern that'll bring a few more of those showers closer to our coastline and further away from inland and eastern sections. So calm in the tropics right now, but we do continue to monitor it. The uh, satellite view shows this cluster of clouds down here. And, yeah, a couple of explosions of some pretty big thunderstorm activity there, but we still have this drier air kind of a infusing southward into the Caribbean, at least the northern parts of the Caribbean. And as we watch it lift northward and move into areas of the Gulf waters as we head into the weekend, we may see some development there. Uh, but this is a pretty tough area to see any kind of development. Back to the, to the west, it's much easier, or to the east, it's much easier. But in, the, in this western section, you, you tend to get some higher shear values. So uh, we'll watch it. The chances of any kind of development over the next couple of days are pretty low, only about 10% over two days. But it goes up to about 20% once it moves into the areas of uh, the southern Gulf. In any event, I don't think we'll see much in the way of development. It will bring some pretty heavy rainfall to the Yucatan and eventually to areas of Mexico and Texas. We will hardly notice its shower activity at all as it lifts to the north. But we may see a little bit of rainfall along the west coast start to increase as we head into Sunday and Monday because of a general more southeasterly wind flow that will develop with time. Forecast for us looks pretty good for boating today. Southwest wind at about 10 knots, becoming a little bit lighter during the nighttime hours and shifting to the northeast. And the forecast for the seven days ahead looks pretty good too. Just a little on the warmer side, but that's okay. It's about where we should be for this time of year. We don't get a lot of cooling rains in the afternoon, but again, a little chance to dry out wouldn't be terribly bad idea, I guess. A 20% chance of rainfall for the next several days, maybe over the weekend. We start to moisten things up a little bit with an uptick in the rain chances. Showers are pushed closer to the coastline. Back to you. All right, thanks, John. Let's take a look outside and check some of that first alert traffic for you. Starting off in Manatee County, those roads are looking pretty decent. Not too bad out there so far for you. 301 State Road 70, our usual hot spots. Heading a little farther south into Sarasota County. Those roads are not looking too bad again. Uh, a little slowdown right there on 41 as you come around the bay. But other than that, it's all looking pretty good out there. If you're headed toward uh, Punta Gorda or maybe Port Charlotte later on and you're heading farther south, 75 and 41, both of those roads are not looking too bad out there for this morning. It is 616 and that is your first alert traffic. Looking ahead now, parents can get a jump start on important back to school health essentials like uh, backpacks and lunch boxes. There's also a free health event next week in Manatee County. Students can take advantage of free immunizations and low-cost physicals next Wednesday, June 20th at the South Florida Museum on 10th Street West in Bradenton. The event goes from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. In this hour is Health Smart. When it comes to your health, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's what our grandmas are said, right? All right. But could, <laughs> but could food be your medicine? ABC's Arlette Science has a new approach to prevention. Food as prevention. A medical meeting on nutrition this week is bringing together a lot of studies on everything from cheese to eggs to pecan nuts. Can what we eat lower our risk of particular diseases? One study says eating an egg a day may help people stave off diabetes. Another looks at colon cancer and finds that low-fat dairy foods may be linked to preventing it, especially fermented dairy like cheese, yogurt, and kefir. Berries, besides tasting great and being in season right now, higher consumption of berries and leafy green vegetables are associated with lower risk of Parkinson's disease. Do you eat pecans every day? A small study connects an ounce and a half of pecans to lower risk of diabetes and heart disease in people who are overweight. All of these are meeting presentations, which means that they haven't been peer-reviewed by other medical researchers or published in a medical journal. Some of the studies had fewer than 100 people. The dairy study had 100,000. But it makes you realize that when you open your fridge, you may be, in a way, opening your medicine cabinet, too. With this Medical Minute, I'm Arlette Sines, ABC News.
Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast. A true act of sportsmanship we have to tell you about between competitors, but even more important, friends. We're going to tell you the story when we come back. But first, 618 right now. A shot outside our window. Looks like a nice day in progress. John Scalzi says dry so far. That could change later in the week. His forecast and more news on the way. I'm Good Morning Suncoast. If you think it's hot outside, just wait until you see even hotter savings inside. Only at Rugs as Art Hot Summer Savings Sale Event will you find the lowest prices on a vast selection of stunning rugs, furniture accents, and accessories. This special event only happens once a year, so hurry in before the best selections are gone. The Hot Summer Savings Event ends soon, so don't miss out on the best prices ever. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. Sunset Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Excuse me a minute. Hi, Dad. No, don't try to get up. Hi, I'm Julie, a ride-at-home caregiver. And if I had been caring for Tom's dad, I would have noticed some dizziness that could lead to balance issues. That's because I'm trained to report any changes in behavior, no matter how small. So Tom could have peace of mind. We'll be right there. We have to go. Hey Tom, you should try Right at Home. They're great for us. The right care, right at home. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service four times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317, go online or visit a Target store today. Florida Studio Theater presents Always Patsy Cline, now held over due to popular demand. A tuneful and memorable tribute, Patsy Cline's rise to legendary stardom is told through the eyes of her biggest fan. Featuring such hit songs as Walkin' After Midnight, I Fall to Pieces, Crazy, and many more you know and love. Critics are calling Always Patsy Cline warm and genuine and engaging. Audiences calling it outstanding. Always Patsy Klein is now playing. Tickets can be purchased by calling 941-366-9000 or by visiting floridastudiotheater.org. There's a shot outside our studio. 622 right now. Should be dry today and hot. John's forecast on the way on Good Morning Sun Coast. Well, you don't see this every day. A true act of sportsmanship at a high school baseball game in Minnesota. After striking out his friend on the opposing team, watch what the pitcher Ty Cohen does next. He comes to the plate and consoles him. How about that? While his teammates all celebrate, he consoles the guy he just struck out. Whoa. Walked him back to the dugout. They played Little League together years ago. Oh, their mamas raised them right. Different high schools. They're going off for ice cream now, it looks like. Oh. The pitcher said he wanted to better to know they'll be friends long after oh. their baseball careers are over, but he still didn't mind striking him out. <laughs> He's like, I'll still take that win. That's right. Well, the world really does have more good in it than bad. From that story to this one, listen to this. A school district in New Jersey received a big gift from one of its former teachers. She left them a million dollars after she passed away. Genevieve Viacava, she's a special education teacher pictured right here. She spent her afternoons clipping coupons and over time she became a secret millionaire. She saved up all of her money and she eventually wanted to leave it to others. Now her friends say they had no idea that she had that kind of money. She left her home, everything in it to one of her best friends. 
As for that million dollar windfall for the district, well, it's going to be invested and then the interest from that investment, it's going to become an annual scholarship for students with special needs looking to further their education. That is a very nice Amazing. Story. Coupons. I love that. The power of coupons. Also being a good person, you know, yes. somewhere in there. <laughs> well, being a mom can be hard. We all know this, but a lucky group of teen moms actually got a big surprise at a Dallas airport. Reporter Tiffany Liu explains how they learned they are being taken to Disney World with their kids. It's hard. <laughs> Traveling can be stressful, especially with your little one. He is very happy. Now picture a flight. It's, like, it's a hot mess express usually. With so, yeah. 110 moms, 55 infants, and countless toddlers. They're all checking in for a flight to Orlando. This is organized chaos, this is what we do. And don't worry, they have their own Southwest plane today. We're not going to drive anybody crazy except ourselves and our mentors and our child care workers, but we're used to that. This is what we do. Mari Rubio is a coordinator with Young Lives, helping teen moms like Raquel Nuncio succeed. We're going to Florida for camp for a week. She was pregnant at 17. Oh yeah, very hard. Raquel tells me she was depressed her whole pregnancy. I knew that I had done something that I wasn't supposed to do. And then <laughs> Elliot was born. I realized everything's going to be okay. Raquel went to Young Lives for guidance. Like many other teen moms, their futures started looking brighter. Good to see you, everybody. Hey, just real quick. All checked in. These young ladies thought they were only going to camp. We just heard word from your Young Lives Camp Southwind. But they had a surprise on the agenda. You are going with your children to <laughs> Two nights in the happiest place on earth. Love you. It's just such a blessing to be able to just give this to them. And it's for a group of moms who want only the best I'm so for their excited. kids. We're going to Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Picking out a new ceiling fan? That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do-it-yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. Thank you. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Sparky. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always finish first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Hurricane season is here, and so is the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Suncoast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with pets, and important phone numbers. Visit MySuncoast.com and download the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. Brought to you by Batteries Plus, the Florida Lottery, and Sarasota Glass and Mirror. Everybody can make something, 
because I think everyone has a spark of creativity. And the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 6.30. A sitting U.S. president, the leader of North Korea, months of back and forth, all leading to a historic agreement signed. We're going to tell you what's next. A tragic ending in an Orlando hostage situation will have the shocking outcome. And today, the Sarasota School Board is expected to make their decision on the district's new police chief. We have those stories, plus your first alert forecast. Good Morning Sun Coast starts right now. And good morning to you on this Tuesday morning. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Stephanie Webb. And I'm Ray Collins. June the 12th, dry out there. John's got the forecast. Good morning, John. Yeah, I put in a 20% chance of rain shower for this morning, and I think that's generous. Uh, we'll probably stay dry, most of us, right straight through the week ahead, it looks like. Um, we have across the region this morning, out in Gulf Waters, a few scattered showers. And we've even had a thunderstorm or two uh, this morning, but uh, that's all out in Gulf Waters. One came pretty close, is coming pretty close, actually, to areas of Anna Maria, but it's just off the coast by about one mile, maybe close enough that folks on Holmes Beach and Anna Maria may see a little bit of light drizzle or a very brief passing rain shower, but nothing very heavy. And that'll be the case throughout most of our morning. We might see as we head toward noon a little bit better chance of some showers developing along the coast and then moving into inland areas. And then as we head into the second half of the day, I think most of that rain chance will be focused in inland areas. That's what happens by 3 o'clock. And then as we head into the evening hours, most everything moves further and further inland away from the viewing area. Hot today, though. Daytime highs topping out in the upper 80s once again with feels like temperatures in the low 90s. Complete forecast for you coming up in a few. All right. Talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic first off in Manatee County. Some delays on 301 southbound as you head from downtown Bradenton towards State Road 70. Otherwise pretty clear in Manatee County. Checking the northern half of Sarasota County. The only delays there you might find are at the... Uh, 30141 intersection with those clear up quickly and then finally to the south of us we'll find out that in south county nothing in the red or even the yellow for that matter so you should have a good commute if you leave right now 631 well, it started with a handshake and ended with a promise. A five-hour meeting between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un resulted in the signing of a landmark agreement. So what was in it? Well, the president agreed to provide security guarantees to North Korea, all of that in exchange for Kim Jong-un agreeing to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. We have developed a, a very special bond. It worked out for both of us far better than anybody could have expected. In that now, that document states that the two countries have had to overcome, quote, decades of tensions and hostilities, but the hope now both will follow through on those signed promises. Well, we wanted to dig a little deeper into this history in the making, so we talked to a local expert all about the Singapore summit. And he says the whole thing has been unusual from the start. Marla Spence has some perspective. She's live now in the studio. Marla? Good morning, guys. Mark Weston is a presidential author and has also written about politics in the Far East. He predicted expectations of the summit could be very low. He says usually when two heads of states get together for an agreement, 90% of the negotiations have already been figured out and both leaders are just finalizing small points. Weston says that wasn't the case here, which makes this historic meeting quite unusual. He says the idea that a whole nuclear agreement could be negotiated in a couple days is naive. Weston says since preliminary negotiations were not discussed between President Trump and Kim Jong-un, it could have created some cause for concern between the two leaders. I should add there's also the danger since this agreement has not been negotiated that one side could disappoint the other so much that they feel double crossed and then tensions could increase. And this morning, people all over the world waited in anticipation on what was exactly discussed during the summit and the details of that signed document. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Marla. Other news now. New this morning, the rules are changing when it comes to illegal immigrants getting asylum. Reporter John Lawrence tells us about changing protections for certain victims. 
Some asylum seekers hoping for help from the U.S. will face a new hurdle. And we understand that all are due proper respect in court and the proper legal process. But we cannot abandon legal discipline and sound legal concepts. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who oversees immigration courts, says the White House is overturning protections for those seeking asylum from gang and domestic violence. We have not acted hastily, but carefully. In my judgment, this will be a correct interpretation of the law. After this change from the Department of Justice, victims of violence can only qualify for asylum if they can prove their native country will not protect them from additional danger. This new policy could prevent tens of thousands of immigrants who are seeking assistance from the U.S. Asylum was never meant to alleviate all problems, even all serious problems, that people face every day all over the world. Critics of this move include the American Immigration Lawyers Association. In a statement, the nonpartisan, nonprofit organization said, the Attorney General is inappropriately prejudging these cases and disregarding the principle that every single asylum case must be carefully considered on its own merits. The AILA also says it expects this case will be decided in court. I'm John Lawrence reporting. More than 60,000 people from Honduras, Guatemala and El Salvador applied for some form of asylum in 2016. Well, an update this morning in that Orlando standoff that we've been following, and it is not good. Four children are dead following the standoff. The suspect accused of shooting an Orlando police officer. Now, that suspect, Gary Lindsay, is also dead. The entire situation began late Sunday night when officers responded to a domestic violence call. Now, the children that Lindsay was holding hostage ranged in age from 1 to 11. Two of them were his children, and the others belonged to his girlfriend. The officer who was shot is expected to survive. Northport residents met the finalists for police chief last night in a meet and greet at City Hall. Three candidates remain from the 88 who initially applied. The candidate who gets chosen will replace Kevin Vespia, who resigned, retired earlier this year. Captain Chris Morales has been the interim chief until a permanent one is chosen. The three finalists are Ralph Anthony, who most recently served as the deputy chief of police from the Tampa International Airport. Todd Garrison, a captain with the Lee County Sheriff's Office and Paul Grohowski, a police chief for a community college in Southern California. We're very fortunate to have some good candidates. I think, I don't think we can go wrong. It's really just uh, picking somebody that, that fits with us and hopefully move this growing department and growing city in the right direction. We're trying to find the right fit for Northport because um, we've had some issues in Northport with the PD and it's growing rapidly. The Northport city manager will make a decision sometime next week on a new police chief. Well, this morning, the Sarasota County School Board is meeting with various law enforcement agencies to discuss the future of their school security. Among the topics, picking their new school district police chief. Now down to two candidates, Michael Wiggins or Paul Grahowski. Wiggins comes from Polk County, where he's currently a captain for the sheriff's office. Now, Grahowski, who you just heard, is also a candidate for Northport Chief of Police. He, of course, was police chief for Allen Hancock College in Santa Maria, California. In just two months, Sarasota County will need armed security in each of its 53 schools. The pick for chief is expected to happen later today. Florida airboat operators could soon be required to undergo more training. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission will meet next week in Sarasota to talk about what courses airboat operators should be required to take. The FWC will also look at what qualifications are needed for the potentially dangerous job. The changes are being made as part of Ellie's Law named after Elizabeth Goldenberg, who died last May after being thrown from an airboat on an Everglades boat tour. The new law will also require operators to complete a first aid course that includes CPR. An update on the city of Sarasota's long-term plan to protect the Lido Beach shoreline. City Hall says it's been approved for more than $13 million in federal money. Commissioners asked the state for the money only a week ago after declaring a local state of emergency last month. The city manager there, Tom Barwin, says the protection project will start sometime in the near future, adding in part that monitoring the beach will be a significant part as well as having a thoughtful approach to how to maintain all of Sarasota County's shorelines over the next coming decades. 
Well, he is 94 years young. Former President George H.W. Bush is celebrating his birthday today in Maine. Bush's chief of staff says number 41 just wants a low key day and no presents. A few of his kids are in town to help him celebrate, including former President George W. Bush. Now, the elder Bush is spending the summer in Kennebunkport, Maine, for the first time without his wife of 73 years, who died back in April. Barbara would have turned 93 last Friday. Well, still to come on Good Morning Sun Coast. The second anniversary of the Pulse nightclub massacre, how the community is remembering those lives lost today when we come back. But first, let's take a look right now. Let's go right back to Marina Sands Bay in Singapore. A historic summit took place, agreement signed. We're going to have all the details as our morning continues. But first, back here on the Sun Coast, not a bad day, right, John Scott? Absolutely right. It looks pretty good for us. We have a few scattered showers out in Gulf waters, but so far they haven't really been a bother over land. We have about a 20% chance, I'll put it near the coastline this morning, for some of these showers to kind of work their way closer to shore. But I'll tell you what, as we head into the next couple of hours, these showers will tend to dissipate. Right now, the closest one, as I mentioned, just offshore. Well, it's gone from radar this second, but it was just about a mile offshore. We have a, a few boxes that remain unchecked for your morning commute because we just don't see any problems with the weather this morning. It should be lovely. Upper 70s, mid 80s on the way home. And uh, as far as the fire danger goes, even though we haven't had any rainfall, we still have had so much recently that we remain low in the fire danger index. Complete forecast for you coming up in a few. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Subaru vehicles hold their value better than any other brand for 2018, according to ALG. And Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's most trusted brand for four years running. The Subaru Outback is an IIHS top safety pick for 10 years running. Lease a new Subaru Outback today for just $2.49 a month. Or get 0% financing with zero down. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system can make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> now SoClean.com has released the world's first and only automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer free for 30 days. Just call 800-604-0398. My health has improved. It's simple to use and I'm not worried about infections. SoClean works on all CPAP machines and popular masks, destroying CPAP bacteria, viruses, and germs without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid, and in just minutes, voila, sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited time offer. Call now, 800-604-0398, or visit SoClean.com today. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. I survived my cancer, but you can stop cancer before it starts. Talk to your doctor and go to thinkaboutthelink.org to learn more. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 
So we are looking at a temperature coming in at around 78 degrees with about a 20% chance of rainfall by 9 a.m. And that rain chance is actually going to be decreasing as we progress through the morning hours and we get a little daytime heating, at least along the coastline. It will be trans transferring its uh, uh, possibility for development into inland areas a little bit later on this afternoon. By 12 noon, I think we'll have about a 20% chance of watching that transition take place between coastal regions and inland locations. And then as we head into the 3 p.m. hour, <clears throat> I think most everything will be in inland areas. Um, along the coastline, we should remain dry through the afternoon. So if you're headed to the beach, should be pretty nice in terms of any kind of inclement weather. <clears throat> the only thing near the beach, we do have some red tide being reported at our area beaches, especially from about Lido southward, maxing out around Minnesota. Uh, the, uh, the the spotters that go out there and kind of determine whether or not there are actual irritants in the air due to the red tide being detected in the water are reporting that Minnesota has the highest concentration and it's moderate. It's not high, but it's still uh, probably the heaviest uh, from around Venice southward. So we watch today a few scattered showers along Gulf waters, but nothing that's really impacting our land all that much. We have one little shower uh, kind of reappearing here about a mile offshore of Anna Maria Island then another one a couple miles offshore of uh, around Siesta, but nothing that's producing any rainfall over land right now. So we have this kind of dry plume of air kind of sandwiched in between clouds to the south and clouds to the north. That dry air is going to stay with us again today, kind of reducing our rainfall chances just a little bit. It is in the process of moistening, and I think as we head into the afternoon, that whole column will get a little bit more moisture in it to help support a few more showers in inland areas. I think the general trend will be for this high pressure ridge to be situated in a place where our winds will be lightly out of the west. And then as we develop a sea breeze, it'll reinforce that westerly wind and push that sea breeze and into inland areas where we'll see the showers begin to develop. Then as we head into the probably the later part of the evening, by that I mean probably around midnight, we'll see a few of the remaining showers kind of drift back to the coast as everything dies out. For today, I think we'll have a mostly sunny and dry day. It should be nice. Uh, hot, but nice. And then for most of the week, I think it'll be pretty much the same. Dry, sunny, warm, with nothing to break that afternoon heat. Calm in the tropics right now, though we do have some showers and thunderstorms that have exploded over the course of the last hour or two. You can see that on our satellite imagery, but we still have this drier air that in part is being sandwiched in over the center part of the state of Florida. Some of it has made its way further to the south and it's kind of being pulled into the general area of low pressure that's producing those showers to the south of us. You can see that as this kind of tan color here on the water vapor imagery. That will certainly impact the potential for any kind of development with this system. Plus, upper level winds in this area of the Caribbean are generally kind of hostile for development. But the Hurricane Center says that with time, that low, that general broad area of low pressure will lift out into Gulf waters and maybe bring a wet weekend for parts of Texas. A 10% chance of any kind of formation over two days, not very high. And over five days, not very high, coming in about 20%. And the general trend will be for this system to lift off toward the southern Gulf and maybe bring some rain showers to parts of the Caribbean or Texas. You can see that on this European model forecast. The, the moisture kind of lifts northward and eventually brings some rain shower chances to uh, that area of the western Gulf. Not a lot of potential for any kind of strong development here. Certainly last week we were looking at some computer models suggesting perhaps a hurricane in the Gulf. Yeah, it doesn't look like that at all right now. For us, we might see a little bit of a trough develop here by Sunday into Monday and help increase our rain chances along the western Gulf Coast. So I've upped the rain chance just a little bit. It's certainly, it's not clear cut right now, but we'll continue to watch it. There'll be some more information coming out over the course of the next couple of days. Southwest wind at about 10 knots, becoming light as we head into the evening. And the forecast looks pretty good for us, actually. We'll have several days in a row of pretty much the same old, same old. We'll have a 20% chance of showers, first in the morning near the coast, then inland in the afternoon. We'll have lots of sunshine. We'll have warm temperatures at or slightly above the average. And not much rain showers to break the afternoon heat, so uh, many hours of warm temperatures. And then as we head into the weekend, perhaps that little developing trough and shift in winds might bring us a little bit better rain chance uh, for coastal showers as we head into Sunday and Monday.
Back to you. All right, thanks, John. Take a look outside. That first alert traffic, lots of yellow on that map in Manatee County. Lots of slowdowns and delays going on right now. 41 is uh, experiencing a lot of slowdowns. 301 State Road 70, a lot of delays in that area. Also coming over the bridges into Bradenton, starting to see some slowdowns there as well. Plus another slowdown right there as you go a little bit farther on 301. Then in Sarasota County, not too bad again there. Most of those slowdowns are all up in Manatee County. B Ridge and Clark also starting to see some delays and a little bit of congestion there. If you're heading south, a little bit farther south in the area toward uh, Port Charlotte or Punta Gorda, no real slowdowns in any of those areas. Both 75 and 41 are running pretty smooth out there so far. That's your first alert traffic at 648. Well, this morning, a community is coming together for the two-year anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting. Survivors and victims' families are coming together to remember. They also have a run, an art exhibit, and a lawsuit. A group of survivors and relatives of several victims have sued the Orlando Police Department and the owners of the Pulse nightclub. Today, bells will ring 49 times at a church in downtown Orlando. Plus, a remembrance service will also be held at the nightclub itself. Work has begun to turn a one acre plot in Hawaiian Paradise Park into the island's second village for eruption evacuees. Yeah, this land belongs to a church there. It's, it's a congregation that raised enough money to build 10 tiny homes for volcano eruption evacuees. The pastor says right now he's asking the community for more donations. There's no water there, so we got to put up water catchment systems. There's no power there. So we're either looking at either generator or getting a temporary power from the county. They hope to complete the project in the next month. Well, on his way back from the Singapore summit, President Trump is making a stop in Hawaii. Details on his itinerary have not yet been released, but the White House says he does plan to visit the joint base at Pearl Harbor. Trump was last in Hawaii in November with First Lady Melania. Still ahead, your top seven headlines before 7 a.m. That, of course, includes one last look at your first alert forecast as well as another look at your morning commute. Here's a look at the slowdowns outside our window. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> There's the Renaissance oh. and the Alinari. Well, you see Sarasota <laughs> Bay off in the distance. Pretty sky out there. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast on ABC7. My California classes experience has been wonderful. My mother's a huge inspiration. Before she passed away, she would say, you should do something special for yourself. First time I saw my closet, I immediately thought, this is the best thing I've ever done for myself. I call it my Tiffany style closet. I mean, I can shop in my own closet every day. I love that. My name is Cynthia, and this is my California closet story. If you don't want to fall immediately into love, Look away. If you don't want to awaken a desire for excellence, look away. If you don't want to be seduced, please look away. Rediscover your passion for driving at Sunset Maserati Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. My credit score was not that great. I didn't understand what went into my credit score. It was overwhelming. Do you want to attain better credit health but don't know where to start? Credit Sesame can help by providing you a free credit score. I love the app. It's so easy to use. It's like having a, your own financial coach. Credit Sesame broke my credit score down into things that I understood and it made me think, I can do this. And the awesome thing about Credit Sesame, it's free. It's 100% free. You don't need to go it alone. Get started today at CreditSesame.com. Hunger is a growing problem in our area, and a huge number of Suncoast residents are suffering in silence. It could be your coworker, your child's classmate, or your friend fighting to secure their next meal. But you can help. ABC7 is partnering with local organizations to help feed the Suncoast. Go to mysuncoast.com slash hunger to join the fight. Help us help the hungry. It's summer on the Sun Coast, and you know what that means. It's Friday Fest season. And you are invited. Join ABC7 for the Van Wazel Performing Arts Hall's free outdoor summertime concert series. Jam to dance music by Ja Movement on June 22nd. The movement is sure to get you dancing. With food trucks, beverage vendors, and more, it's the perfect spot to enjoy great music and a summer sunset over the bay. For more information, go to this number or go to mysuncoast.com slash Friday Fest. 
My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. It is 6.53 and here's your top seven before seven. Number one is John Scalzi's first alert weather forecast. Ray, we're looking at pretty quiet conditions out there currently. What to grab as you head out the door, your sunglasses, and your sunscreen, because that's what you'll need today. As we head out the door, expect to see uh, mostly sunny skies. There's a few inland showers develop during the afternoon. There'll be isolated showers, though. And don't forget, we have updated forecasts for you all the time on the My Suncoast First Alert app, as well as mysuncoast.com and social media. Back to you. All right, number two, we'll check the traffic. First Alert traffic showing some uh, congestion building there on State Road 64, mostly in the westbound lanes. Quite a bit of build up there around downtown Bradenton. Otherwise, not too bad. And we'll check the uh, next maps at 725. And number three started with a handshake, ended with a promise. A five hour meeting between President Trump and, Trump and Kim Jong un resulted in the signing of a landmark agreement. Big news there. Number four some asylum seekers are hoping for help from the U.S., but they'll not get help in certain cases. Attorney General Jeff Sessions says the White House is overturning protections for those seeking asylum from gang and domestic violence. This new policy would prevent tens of thousands of immigrants who are seeking assistance. And number five, a tragic ending to the Orlando standoff hostage situation. This morning, all four kids plus the suspect were found dead. The officer who was shot has serious injuries but is expected to survive. Number six this morning, the Sarasota County School Board is expected to choose its first police chief. One of the, one of the finalists is also a finalist for the top police job in Northport. And number seven, what is trending today? Michael Myers, he's back. Jamie Lee Curtis is also back for one final showdown. They've been promising this for years with Myers. They just released the trailer for the new Halloween movie that is out this November, or out this October, excuse me, fittingly enough, but she's gonna be back and uh, John Scalzi is already scared. This is your scariest yes. movie you've ever seen? No, what scariest, scariest movie I've ever seen? Yeah, yes, what's your scariest? Hmm. The Devils? The Devils. Okay, mine was The Strangers. Super scary home invasion. What was your scary Silence movie? of the Lambs. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Uh, I came home that night frightened to go inside. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Exorcist did that to yeah. me. Oh, that was a bad one, too. Yeah. I couldn't watch all that. Exorcist. On that frightening note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Enjoy your day somehow. <laughs> 656, here's a peek outside. Beautiful sky there above Sarasota Bay. It is gorgeous. Good Morning America is up next right here on ABC7.